Welcome to the Code Burner Audio Podcast, presented by Black Maelstrom Media. Now let's get into episode one, Bounty Man. The music blares at a deafening volume, drowning out any attempts at conversation. Those brave enough to try to chat are hopelessly overwhelmed by the thundering bassline, the cacophony of synthesized chords, and the relentless pounding of the kick drum. The precisely timed rhythm guides a multitude of scantily clad bodies, and even those who opt for clothing, sway, and pulse to the beat on a dance floor that's as large as a football field. This nightclub is a melting pot of lovers, adversaries, and everything in between, creating an atmosphere that is simultaneously the most sexy, depraved, and dangerous club to ever exist. Bounty man, Abrams Icarus, navigates the throng of people with a cautious yet purposeful stride. The club is awash in a mesmerizing display of multicolored laser beams that rain down upon the revelers at irregular intervals. Intense bursts of light are blinding one moment and then plunge the scene into complete darkness the next, creating a strobe effect that makes the crowd seem to start and stop in time with the beat. The Bounty Man stands out even in this uber-eccentric environment, wearing dark glasses and a three-quarter length black coat concealing business tactical attire, his signature look when he's on the hunt. Thankfully, nobody in the club has any interest in him. Their sole purpose is to remain blissfully unaware. The banging drums, the endless stream of illegal substances, and the enthusiastically encouraged sexual encounters all serve as potent distractions. In this colossal party, it seems as though nobody is truly present. They are all lost in the sedation of the moment, and the world's hottest party unfolds. And no one there is really there. He made his way through the bustling crowd, following the lead of his wristband neurotracker device. A journey that felt like an hour from the dance area to the back of the club only took a few minutes in reality. Just up ahead, at the fringes of the dance floor, lay a succession of dimly lit corridors. The tracker prompted Abrams to head in that direction. He drew a deep breath and ventured into the central hall, prepared for whatever lay ahead. As Abrams advanced into the corridor, the music's pounding intensity faded gradually into the background. The once vibrant and lively club now seemed to slip away, its electric atmosphere becoming a distant memory. In stark contrast, what lay ahead was an extended, poorly illuminated passageway. Its walls were constructed of cold, grey stone, enveloping him in an eerie darkness. On either side of him, shadows concealed large, black iron doors, each featuring small covered slots, offering only glimpses of whatever transpired within. Muffled murmurs emanated from some of these cells, while others resounded with chaotic screams. Abrams remained firmly focused on his singular objective, allowing nothing to distract him from his mission. The corridor meandered and twisted until the music's distant echoes vanished completely. A few individuals passed him, returning to the club area without making eye contact. Abrams paid no heed to anyone else in this place. His attention remained unwaveringly fixed on his target, indicated by his neural tracker, which pointed towards a room ahead. The tracker's chime began to escalate, inadvertently drawing the attention of a few passers-by. After inputting a sequence of numbers, Abrams deactivated the tracker and quietly slipped inside the dark room. The dungeon-like cell had an oppressive atmosphere, characterized by its darkness and the unmistakable mustiness of damp stone walls. As Abrams cautiously entered, his senses adjusted to the obscurity, allowing him to discern the vague silhouettes of two figures lurking in the shadows. One of them appeared markedly slight and delicate, resembling a young woman or perhaps even a girl, while the other figure loomed large, defying the typical proportions of a human being. In the corner, Abrams could perceive the frantic struggle unfolding before him. The petite figure, whom he now recognized as a young woman, 
was valiantly attempting to free herself from the grasp of this muscle-bound, extraordinarily large man. Her efforts spoke of desperation as she fought to disentangle herself from his powerful grip. The massive man, who initially had his back turned to Abrams, seemed to sense a presence behind him. With a slow and deliberate motion, he pivoted toward the center of the cell, his massive frame now fully facing the bounty hunter. The cold and unrelenting gaze of the giant met Abrams. Private party, get lost, bellowed the giant, his voice a mixture of annoyance and defiance. Abrams, unwavering and resolute, responded firmly, The party's over. I'm here for the girl. You'd be wise to make a run for it while you still can. Otherwise, I'll have no choice but to end you. It's your call, asshole. The big man, seemingly unimpressed and undeterred, retorted with a sinister grin. How about I just party with your... Before he could finish his sentence, Abrams was quick to react. In the blink of an eye, the bounty hunter retrieved a billy club from a concealed holster nestled at the small of his back. As he activated the device, it extended, and then quick, intense streaks of bright white electricity burst forth creating a frenzied dance of electric arcs at the weapon's business end of the blackjack disruptor. Without a wasted movement, the bounty man's strike was deliberate and straight to the point, catchy the giant completely off guard. He then delivered a powerful, precise blow to the man's chest. The electric charge surged through the giant's body with merciless force, causing him to convulse violently. The excruciating shock radiated outward, enveloping his entire frame as he let out a piercing cry of pain. Trapped within the electric net, escape became utterly futile for the large man. With his foe now immobilized by the relentless electric surge, Abrams shifted his focus to the young woman, wasting no time in her rescue. He disengaged the blackjack, returning it to its holster, then swiftly unbuttoned his jacket and wrapped it securely around her trembling form, providing a modicum of comfort and warmth. I'm going to get you out of here, Abrams reassured her, his voice imbued with unwavering determination and empathy. Tears welled up in her eyes as she responded in a small, fragile voice. I'm sorry. I didn't know. A soft, understanding smile crossed Abrams' face as he placed a reassuring hand on her shoulder. It's okay, he said soothingly. Don't worry about that now. There's bigger fish to fry. We have to safely exit. But first, I need to sever the neural signal. With a calculated focus, Abrams knew that their escape was not guaranteed until he could deactivate the mechanisms that had ensnared the young woman in this living nightmare. Abrams retrieved a small circular pad from his pocket, scarcely larger than a quarter, and carefully positioned it directly on the woman's forehead. He glanced at her, his eyes filled with empathy, and spoke with a smile that was clearly forced. Brace yourself. I'm told this hurts. With deliberate precision, he pressed a series of buttons on his device, triggering an excruciating scream from the woman. Her cries echoed through the cell and out into the hallway. Abrams held her securely in his arms, providing what comfort he could in the aftermath of such intense pain. As Abrams cradled the woman, he noticed that the static electric net surrounding the giant man was gradually fading, like dissipating smoke in the wake of a firestorm. It was only a matter of time before the colossal man was free, and looking for payback. Turning his attention to his wrist device, Abrams intently studied the data cascading across the small display. An abyssal expression descended upon his face as he processed information that painted a dire picture of what lay ahead. Having trouble triangulating your position, Abrams began, his voice tense with urgency. We're going to have to give my hack time to fully execute. Can you run? He inquired, concern etched on his face. The young woman looked at him, her uncertainty palpable, and replied hesitantly. 
I can try. Before another word could be exchanged, the electric net that had confined the colossal man was no more. His immense form, now free, emitted tendrils of smoke from his charred body. In a voice filled with both rage and malevolent satisfaction, he hissed. So, you're a code burner? The giant's words oozed with a toxic blend of contempt and loathing. The administrators will pay a king's ransom for your execution. I knew I was going to get lucky today, one way or another. With that ominous declaration, the colossal man surged forward, launching himself into a ferocious attack, leaving no doubt that the impending confrontation would be a battle of life and death.